I'm going to show you how to execute the automatic payment program with the Fiori app in SAP S4 Analysis. My name is Nundish and I've been working with SAP since 2001, with my main focus in finance setting. I work as an SAP FICO contract. In case you want to reach me out for a project, please find my LinkedIn ID in the description of this video. If you are just now reaching to this channel, its name is SAP at a glance, and the aim is to share SAP knowledge. Therefore, do not forget Please subscribe to this channel to receive new videos on a weekly basis. My dear audience, I would like to make you a request to help us to reach to the first 1,000 subscribers. At the moment, we have more than 17,000 views and less than 400 subscribers. Could you please help us to balance this scale by subscribing to this channel? Here in this channel, we deliver very high quality of content. And I use my free time to share SAP knowledge for free. I think it's fair enough also to ask you to share SAP knowledge. How can you do that? It is very simple. You just need to subscribe to this channel, share it within your network, and it is done. Let's reach to the first 1,000 subscribers. Now that we have finished the configuration of FBZP, that you can find the link in the description of this video, is now time to run our first automatic payment for vendors. And now without any further ado, let's start and let's go to the system to see how we can do this magic. Now we are in the SAP Fiori Launchpad. For the ones that don't know yet how to navigate in the Fiori Launchpad, you can find the link in the description of this video to learn how to do it. If you struggle to find Fiori apps, in the SAP Fiori library, you can also find the link in the description of this video. So now we are going to see how we can do this magic. Here in the SAP for all, in our tab, I'm going to pull the manage supplier line items. I know that we need to create payments, but first we need to see the supplier line items. Thousand four nine seven which is the one that we have been using in this channel what are my open items i'm going to click here so this is not new for you this so i'm not going to explain how to work with this and now uh, we are going to insert some fields house bank and bank accounts and also and also i forgot i want to add the payment method Payment method. So now, if we go here, we see that we have some invoices that we have our hands house, house bank and account ID that we have created in the previous videos. But I can show you quickly to refresh your memory if you haven't seen where we done this magic in the previous video. So I'm going just to show you S400 and now in the ranking order this is our video for the payment method U that we have created in, in the previous videos and then inside I have the count ID. So basically going back here we are going to do some change. For example, here we can select all, but I want to select only one line. I don't want to consume all my documents. I'm going to click here in Edit Line Items. And then I'm going to insert Payment Method. It's empty. I'm going to put B. And then My House Bank, I'm going to put Bank of YouTube. Okay, business partner bank account, if we have it, so we have also the Dunning area. So basically, this is to change the, the line items on uh, mass modes. So when I selected only one option, I'm going to change only one document. Now, as you can see, the line has been uh, selected and adapted. So this is not due yet. So it's not a good option for us. I'm going also to change this one, one more time. Now our line has been updated. So now I'm going to open, I'm going to open another Fiori app, which is called 
schedule automatic payment, which is exactly the same as the as F and the 10, the transaction codes, which I can show you here. The transaction code F under 10 is to run automatic payments. So this URI app is an emulation of that. So I'm going to change to number two. In the parameters, we are going to define our company code. Then the payment method is the U that we have been working. The next payment date I'm going to choose tomorrow. So in the supplier, I'm going to put my supplier 497. And then here in the free selection, normally when we are in the testing system, I like to, to avoid to have mistakes and uh, because not everything is uh, done. I normally choose document numbers and then inside, and then I can put the document number that I want to select not to uh, consume all the data. For example, here in our example, I could come here and I could like copy paste this document. So then when I run this, only this document will get uh, picked up. So it's good for testing systems because you don't want to uh, consume all the information. But for production, I don't think you should be putting here any, any documents uh, for this uh, option. Of course, you can have other, other options. We can choose others. And then document vendor master data. Inside of document, you have a lot of things what you can choose for the document itself. As you can see, you can explore yourself this, this, this part. In the additional log, normally I make always like this, and then I'm going to put just my vendor. Uh, normally you put the full range. If you have this in production, you put the full range of vendors here. Print out, print out medium data. If you remember for our, uh, in during the configuration, the program for our um, payment method is this one. I created here a variant that I want to show you. I think it is this one. So in this variant, now if I click here in maintain variants, I'm going to show you that the company code is payment and sending is the same company code. Then I'm saying for the selections, this is the payment term, payment method U, and then my house bank, my account ID. So if you see the account ID I wanted to show you is this one, you see? So this is the account ID that we have created for payment method U. So now we go back again, and then I can put the currency, it's not mandatory, but I want to put, then I need to say, this is the data medium exchange, so this is the file, and then print immediately, dot put control, and then here we normally tick the three. So this is the carriage return and line feed. So this, this is for the, the file and then we keep as this and then here we advise from bank vendor in the additional details we leave this payment amount so this is just a test system you need to to do it the same so here everything is done i'm going to get back because i didn't do anything i just wanted to show you what is inside of this information if you are enjoying this video as me doing for you please make a like to us So now getting back, save parameters. Parameters have been saved. Now I'm going back for the status. Now we are going to start running our magic. So proposal, I want to click in proposal and I'm going to put start immediately. I don't want to create a file just now. I want just to make the schedule. Payment proposal has been created. So now we go and display the log of the proposal. So now we see the job, our vendor, the document that was selected, and then the payment method. And then we have payment method who? You, that we have been checked. So this is our bank, is being checked, everything is doing check, payment view is permitted. So far, so good. So here, when we have this, we know that we are in the good track because we are going to be able to perform the payment of this invoice. 
So now I'm going to get back one step and then I'm going to click in the payment run. In the payment run, I'm going to create payment medium. Schedule, start immediately and then press enter until this gets green. Okay, this got green. Now we are going to click here in payment and then we can see that we have this document that has been created as a, as the payment for the open invoice. And then we, if I scroll down a little bit more, I can see that the DME data for the house bank is not maintained. So this is not, uh, this is not good if it was a, a production system, but it's not a production system. This, so far, so good. So it's not the intention of having this uh, file uh, ready to be sent to the bank is the intention of this video is to show you how this transaction works. We are going to get back for this configuration later of the DME for this house bank. Now here I want to show you something else. So when we go to environment, we have payment medium and then we have the DME administration. So we can see this is the payment that is going to be done in our file. And then if I click here, I can see display DME content. So I can see the, the file format and what is inside of the file that is going to be sent to the bank. Go back. So the process, is it done? Is it finished? Yes, but we need to validate something before you leave this video. So now we go back here and we are going to choose clear items. And then we can put actually the clearing date of today. So if you see, this is the one that we have just finished. This, this one that we have just paid today. So if I click here in the journal entry, I can see that this has a clearing document that was created with our payment. And when I click here in the clearing document, I also go for the clearing document and see what's happened inside and how it was paid and against which accounts and so on. If this video was useful for you, please leave some comments. Now you know how to execute the automatic payment program with the Fiori app in SAP s 4 n system. Thanks for watching this video. You can find the next video in the description of this one. Please do not forget, subscribe to this channel to receive new videos on a weekly basis. See you in the next video.